You're going to test fully driverless cars in San Francisco starting this year. Initially, just a small fleet, five cars. How hopeful are you about expanding and growing the testing in San Francisco? Uh, well, we're obviously incredibly excited to have reached this milestone, and uh, it represents the culmination of you know, years of work by thousands of people. Um, so it's, it's awesome, but uh, at the same time, it's really just the beginning of what comes next. And uh, what we're obviously focused on you know, overall is ultimately making a really big positive impact on transportation. Uh, and to do that, you know, we obviously need to deploy uh, this technology and these vehicles uh, at a very large scale. But we are going to step into that in a very, uh, in a very uh, uh, thoughtful and responsible way and gradually increase our uh, capabilities uh, and presence and make sure that we're building trust in the technology uh, as we do that. So the big development here is no safety drivers. What are the safety mechanisms to avoid accidents? I am a San Francisco resident. Should I be worried about these cars roaming the streets of San Francisco? Well, I'd say, first of all, safety is the number one priority at Cruise, and, you know, that's the focus, the first focus that we have and uh, the focus in everything that we, uh, that we do. Uh, we have more than 2 million miles of, uh, of testing that we've been doing uh, uh, in the city with back, uh, backup drivers, uh, and the technology has now developed to the point where uh, we believe uh, we're ready to take that very uh, next step and do it at a very small scale initially, uh, take, that, uh, take that next step and deploy uh, without somebody behind the wheel. Uh, but we have very extensive safety protocols uh, in place on top of all of the testing uh, that we've done. And again, our goal is to really build trust in this technology uh, and to uh, uh, you know, step into it in a very, very responsible way. Now, Elon Musk has suggested that autonomous startups like Cruise, like Waymo, that your cars are better suited to small, specialized situations, uh, geofenced locations, and not um, for traveling widely. What is your response to that? Well, our focus at Cruise is really to solve the problem of transportation where it's, you know, where it's most acute and where the real transportation crisis is, and that's in our cities. And that's why we've chosen... Uh, to you know, to develop our technology to work in a very very complex environment, uh, you know, like San Francisco, um, so that we can really solve you know the problems of transportation where they're uh, where they're most serious. So, will we see you test the commercial service outside of California? Uh, for sure. I mean, our goal is to deploy this technology ultimately uh, at very very large scale and solve the problems of transportation. You know, uh, not just in San Francisco, not just in California, but frankly, you know, ultimately across the world. Uh, you know, everywhere you look, um, transportation today is you know too dangerous, uh, too dirty, too time-consuming, and too expensive. And we believe self-driving technology can uh, uh, make a huge positive impact uh, on all of those, and just you know, give all of us time back, you know, make travel safer and more accessible for everybody. So, what will be your first foray into? commercial driverless cars? Could it be autonomous food delivery, for example? Yeah, we see uh, a lot of different opportunities. I think the two, uh, the two most obvious ones, of course, are uh, moving people, you know, so uh, autonomous uh, uh, ride hail service, and then also, you know, delivery of goods is another huge market opportunity, and we expect to pursue uh, both of those, uh, you know, in the not-too-distant future. What about driverless freight? Is that something that's on your radar? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think once the technology is uh, uh, you know, has matured and has been uh, proven uh, uh, to to uh, be effective at large scale, you know, there's a whole host of opportunities. So I think anything anything that's on the road and uh, uh, is getting driven today conventionally is uh, is uh, an opportunity for us. And talking about the economics of an autonomous shuttle. You've got this permit from the California Public Utility Commission to give rides to the public, but you can't charge a fare. Should they let you charge a fare? Well, eventually, uh, of course, to run a business, we need to uh, charge a fare and generate revenue uh, to, cover our, uh, to cover our costs. So um, you know, that will be an important uh, uh, step along the way. But more importantly, I would say you know, one of the things that we do believe that we'll be able to do is to provide transportation to people at a much lower cost than the other alternatives they have today. So today people can you know, take a cab or they can take a, a ride share or they can drive themselves. Um, but there's a lot of people that don't have accessibility to transportation, can't afford uh, those alternatives, don't have access to public transit. 
uh, necessarily, and our goal is to make uh, transportation super affordable and super accessible for everybody, and we think that's one of the unique uh, opportunities uh, that uh, self-driving technology can bring to our cities. So how do you see the economics for an autonomous shuttle actually adding up for crews? Well, we know today how much people pay to get around, right? We know what people pay to take, uh, you know, to take a, a, um, you know, a cab or a rideshare, or what they pay to uh, own and operate their own car. And our goal is to be able to deliver uh, a service that's more convenient, safer, uh, and at a much lower cost than those other alternatives. And so we know we know where our costs need to be to be able to do that, and we're working, uh, you know, very hard. Uh, to get to that level. One of the big advantages we have at Cruise uh, is the Cruise Origin, which is our purpose-built uh, self-driving vehicle, uh, which is uh, in very advanced uh, development now. We showed that uh, to everybody back in January. And one of the reasons we decided that that was the way to go, uh, you know, to develop a purpose-built vehicle rather than retrofitting to, uh, to some other vehicle, is it gives us obviously a, a much better vehicle and a better experience with a customer, but it gives us a huge cost advantage and allows us to be able to offer, offer transportation to folks at uh, much, much lower uh, price levels.